In the race to vaccinate, we know many of you still might have concerns about the shots, and that's why we're dedicating the next half hour to answering some of your pressing questions, whether you're reluctant about vaccines in general, a certain version of the vaccine or the potential side effects. We have two of the leading vaccine experts in our community ready to share their knowledge right with you. Thanks for joining us here at 1230 for this special town hall. I'm Damani Lewis and we've partnered with Nobon Health for this and two of their vaccine experts are joining us right now. First, we have Dr. David Priest joining us from Winston Salem. He's Novant's chief safety and quality official officer and he oversees their infectious disease program. And we're pleased to have Dr. Jerome Williams Jr. right here in studio. He's the senior vice president of consumer engagement for Novant Health. Both of you, thank you so much for joining us here. Happy to be here, thank you. And we wanna start right now with Thanks Dr. Williams. Us. Nationwide, the number, the average number of doses given daily is decreasing. And according to the CDC, the seven day rolling average for doses is more than 2.6 million right now. But on April 13th, that number was nearly 3.4 million. One of the reasons for the dip is that some people are kind of hesitant about those shots. So my first question for you is, Dr. Williams, why is it important for everyone who's eligible for the shots to get vaccinated? Well, first of all, thank you for having us uh, here for this conversation. It's important to continue to get the word out throughout the community. Um, so what we want to do is really suppress uh, this pandemic. And the, and the best way to suppress this pandemic is by getting uh, the vast majority of the population vaccinated. Uh, we understand there are many individuals that have uh, some hesitancy out there. So we're, we're meeting them where they are and addressing the hesitancy issue, uh, providing access to uh, vaccines, and hopefully uh, suppress this uh, pandemic. And, and it's okay to have questions, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, Dr. Williams, let me ask you, I'm sure a lot of people have told you that they're hesitant about the vaccine. Mm -hmm. What do you tell them about, about this vaccine and why it's so important? Mm -hmm. First and foremost, um, uh, we want to meet people where they are. Yeah. Okay, for those individuals who may have some concerns, we want to understand those concerns. We want to address those concerns. Uh, secondly, we explain that the vaccine is very safe and very effective, uh, greater than 90% effective in, in preventing uh, COVID-19 disease. That's, that's highly critical right now. All right, I want to bring in right now, Dr. Priest, uh, some people, became hesitant or perhaps more hesitant when the CDC and the FDA paused Johnson and Johnson's vaccinations because of a possible link to the very rare blood clots. What did the CDC and the FDA find about those blood clots and why did they allow shots to resume recently? Yeah, and again, I'd uh, echo, echo Dr. Dr. Williams and thank you for having us. Um, what happens is when a vaccine rolls like Johnson & Johnson did is that the FDA and CDC have a very vigorous safety program. So anytime something happens to someone who has recently gotten a vaccine, it gets reported to the CDC. And it just shows that their most important concern is the safety of the vaccine. So anytime they hear some things that are of a concern, they said, hey, let's take a break. Let's stop, let's evaluate this. Let's make sure the vaccine is safe. And what they found is it was really about a one in a million chance the vaccine hurt people. They take that information, they look at it, and they, at the end of the day, decided, you know, this vaccine is still incredibly safe and incredibly important for our community. So we think it can resume because of how rare this complication is. Well, Dr. Priest, let's face it, about 8 million people got this vaccine before the pause. What about those people who did get that Johnson & Johnson shot? Should they be worried or is there something they should be doing? Yeah, so remember this, this kind of event or adverse event is incredibly, incredibly rare. And if you got the Johnson Johnson vaccine and that was two or three weeks ago, you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Now, in a very rare instance, if you develop a symptom that you think is unusual, maybe you're a little short of breath, you have abdominal pain, some swelling in your leg, you ought to let your doctor know that because the complication people saw with the vaccine was, was blood clots. Um, mm. But again, if it's two or three weeks out and you're done, you've done fine, there's absolutely nothing to worry about. Uh, and we can, I can tell you, we've given thousands of doses of uh, Johnson & Johnson vaccine, and we have not seen any of those types of adverse events in our organization. I guess people are always looking to find that, that security with what they have and what they were possibly putting in their body. Dr. Priest, the issues with Johnson & Johnson shots uh, bring up a fair point about the COVID vaccine. It was developed uh, so quickly compared to other vaccines. So we have to ask, our next question is, how do we know the vaccine is truly safe when it hasn't been extensively tested? Or do you, dis or do you dispute that? 
Yeah, so I think sometimes people don't realize that this type of technology, uh, referring to mRNA technology that Pfizer and Moderna in particular have used, uh, that technology has actually been around for a few years. Uh, so it's, it's been around longer than people realize. And the reason the vaccine could come along um, so quickly and get developed so quickly is that a lot of things came together all at the same time. One is we had a common enemy, right? This new virus arrived. We had not seen that before. The technology was ready. Billions of dollars were poured into it by governments and uh, manufacturers. And thousands of people volunteered to get it. So all of those things came together rather quickly. No steps at all were skipped mm -hmm. in the course of, of uh, testing this vaccine or moving through the safety process. It just happened to be it all came together at the same time. Usually when you develop a vaccine, it takes several years because you have to raise the money, you have to find volunteers, you have to work through the technology. This was such an urgent situation. It all came together at one time. And really no safety steps were skipped. And so it seems fast. The other thing I'll add is mRNA technology is a really exciting thing. It's, mm. it's likely going to be used for further vaccine technologies, including vaccines that may prevent cancers. So uh, this happened to be the first widespread use of it, but it's actually been a long, around a lot longer than people realize. So they've been working on this for quite some time. Dr. Williams, I want to get back with you for just a moment here. Now, you were very active in our community, getting the word out about the vaccine and why people should get the shot. And some people are hesitant, not just about this vaccine, but other vaccines in general. Well, they may not trust the healthcare systems. How do you try to tackle those concerns? So we have an intentional strategy uh, when it comes to hesitancy. And we, once again, I mentioned we meet people where they are. Mm. So we, we provide education and awareness. That's number one. Number two, we have something what we call a partner activation where we partner with faith-based organizations, community organizations. They're the trusted individuals in those communities. And then we have community distribution of those vaccines where we take um, our, our vaccines deep into the community, whether it be a mobile unit or uh, pop-up sites throughout the community. Right, so it's very, very important. Maybe they learn that information from people who they trust, who they work with on a regular basis. Absolutely. So you're more likely to get the vaccine if someone in your family, someone in your community, someone that you trust uh, already received the vaccine. Let me ask you this. What happens after you get your shot? Is there a risk of getting COVID? Our experts will wait on that coming up in just a few minutes. But first, we want to turn right now. Anyone 16 and older can get vaccinated right now, but when will our kids get vaccinated? We will have that answer coming up. Stay with us. Live right now on our WSOC app. Uh, gentlemen, both of you, thank you so much for, I'm sorry, two minutes and 30 seconds. OK, so while we're still on our WSOC app, let me go ahead and ask you, Dr. Priest, just a couple quick questions. Uh, people have, still have. They've been emailing us and wanting to know, is it OK to donate blood after receiving a COVID vaccine? Yes, it is OK to donate blood after receiving COVID vaccine, and we need people to donate blood. If you go to the American Red Cross websites, they can give you specific information on that. Uh, they may want to know what vaccine product you received, but the vast majority of people can donate blood, and we need them to because there's been a blood donation decline through the pandemic period. So obviously it's crucial right now. And Dr. Williams, uh, I have to ask you, if I miss my second dose, what's next? Where do I go from, from here? So once again, we encourage, especially for the Moderna and Pfizer, uh, which you're referencing, we encourage everyone to get both doses. So if you've missed your second uh, dose, uh, you can still uh, get the uh, second dose. Go to your provider, go to the location um, uh, where you had your first dose, right. and they will arrange for the second dose. I mean, let's face it, life happens while we're making grand plans for it, right? Mm -hmm. So things come up, people have to go on trips, go on different things, so they may not be able to get that second dose. Is there a window mm -hmm. that they have to get that second dose in? So ideally, we say approximately three weeks from the first dose. Right. However, uh, data uh, has supported that you can go upwards of six weeks uh, to get that second dose. Dr. Priest, do we know right now, are we going to need boosters for these vaccinations? Yeah, I think that remains to be seen. I think that's probably going to be the case. Uh, we don't under understand or know yet how long vaccine is protective. And with variants in our communities, if we don't get enough people vaccinated, those variants could um, lead to a state where our current vaccines are not quite as effective. So you may see a situation where, like we get flu shots every year. We could get a booster shot for COVID every year. Uh, the companies are preparing for that if that mm. comes to fruition, uh, but we'll know more in the months ahead. Do you see any more? Uh, vaccines coming on the market. We obviously, there's been some talk of AstraZeneca 
possibly coming on the market to give people maybe another option maybe? Yeah, so there are a number of companies that have worked to develop um, COVID vaccines. Yeah. Uh, AstraZeneca has been a vaccine that's been used in Europe, uh, has not been approved yet here. Uh, so I would anticipate other providers of vaccines would come to market at some point. All right, we'll get to that in, right in a moment. We're going to go back to uh, Channel 9 news coverage. Well, welcome back to our special vaccine coverage where we're asking experts your biggest questions about the shots. Doctor, doctors David Priest and Jerome Williams Jr. from Novant Health are joining both both are joining us. And gentlemen, let me spend a moment in talking about our kids. I have two kids myself. I got a 10 year old and I got an eight year old. But I have to ask for folks if they're 15 or younger, they can't get the vaccine right now. But we know vaccine trials are underway and they're including the Moderna trial involving StarMed in Charlotte. Dr. Priest, this question is directly geared to you. How are those trials coming along and when might children be allowed to get the vaccine? Yeah, so my understanding is those trials are, are going along well. Uh, Pfizer has submitted information around their data for the administration of COVID vaccine to children as, as young as age 12. Uh, so we're hopeful in the weeks ahead that the FDA and CDC will review that data and approve vaccine for that age group. And then I think sometime after that, we'll get data around children as young as six months. So we know those children get a lot of vaccines uh, and that keep them healthy as, as they see their pediatricians. And so I think the first thing you'll see is the 12 to 15 age group that will come online probably this summer is my guess. Mm -hmm. And then in, in the months after that, we'll see some data around younger children. Does that data get scrutinized even more so because we're talking about our kids here? Yeah, absolutely. But remember, the safety data gets scrutinized for all age groups. So every life is important. Safety is the number one and most important thing we, we need to do in medicine. We, we try to abide by the, the idea of first do no harm. Um, and so uh, no matter who the patient is and no matter what their age is, safety is incredibly important. All right, Dr. Priest, thank you. And when we come back, we'll tackle a big concern a lot of you have side effects. Is anyone at higher risk? And are they really something that you should be worried about? Those questions and we'll have those answers coming up next. Live right now on our WSOC app right now. So let's go ahead and just see if we can go and get some more questions answers for our viewers. Dr. Williams, I'm going to turn to you here about this. Uh, do community members have to be a Novant Health patient to get the vaccine at Novant Health? Uh, absolutely not. So um, if you go to getvaccinated.org, uh, you're able to register uh, for the COVID-19 uh, vaccine. And to be uh, quite honest, you can actually choose which type of vaccine you would uh, receive. Mm. Um, if you don't want to register, we do have our pop-up events and our mobile events where folks can walk up and walk into the facility as well as our fixed facilities to receive uh, the vaccine. That, and let's talk a little bit more about that. I don't have insurance. Let's say someone does not have insurance. They're saying I can't get the vaccine. Is that true or is that false? So the vaccine is free. Okay. Now, let me repeat that. The vaccine is free yep. and we encourage all uh, to visit our facilities uh, to get vaccinated. And there's no charge. Dr. Priest, if I can turn to you right now, there are a lot of women out there who have questions uh, if they're pregnant about this vaccine. Can you ease some of those fears about uh, vaccine hesitancy for pregnant women? Yeah, absolutely. We don't have any indication that the vaccine is unsafe for pregnancy. In fact, in the trials that Pfizer did, a, a number of women became pregnant during those trials and there were no reports of adverse events. The National Medical Societies for Obstetricians and Gynecologists have recommended the vaccine and we recommend it. We have to remember that when, pregnancy, when pregnant women get COVID, they mm -hmm. can have significant uh, issues and side and um, medical complications related to COVID itself. Mm -hmm. So COVID is much more dangerous than the vaccine ever would be. And so there's, we definitely recommend that pregnant women and breastfeeding women get vaccinated. And oh. we have had reports right. of seeing that those uh, antibodies are passed on to their children. All right, that is good. We'll get right back to you in a moment. Well, we're back with more of our special town hall answering your questions about the vaccine. If you're just joining us, we've been talking to two vaccine experts from Novant Health. 
On your left is Dr. David Priest, Novant's Chief Safety and Quality Officer. He also oversees their infectious disease program. And on your right, you have Dr. Jerome Williams Jr. He's the Senior Vice President of Consumer Engagement for Novant Health. Now, thank you both gentlemen for coming out here. We want to spend a little, a couple minutes talking about the shots themselves, about what happens when and after you get them. Now, we know some people are worried about the side effects of the vaccine. And we talked a little while ago about the blood clots like linked to Johnson & Johnson's vaccine. But some people who got the Pfizer or the Moderna shots got sick afterwards. So we'll start with this. Dr. Priest, are certain people at higher risk for adverse reactions? Yeah, so that's a great question. What I would say is we don't call them adverse reactions. We call them expected effects. Mm. So we know that when we give you a vaccine and we want your immune system to protect you, it responds to that vaccine. And as part of those expected effects, you could have a sore arm, you may feel tired, even some low grade fever. Uh, and, that, and we expect that it usually lasts a few hours and then it is gone and it's well worth getting through those few hours to protect yourself from COVID. We have seen uh, some particular products, including Moderna, seem to uh, cause a little bit more of an expected effect, particularly in younger people and in women. Uh, but again, those expected effects are very short lived um, and some people have them and some people don't. Um, and even when you have them, they go away very quickly and now you're protected against COVID, which is uh, obviously very important. You know, Dr. Priest, you know, the majority of reactions we've heard about have come from the second doses. What if someone gets a reaction after their first dose? Should they still get that second shot? Yeah, it really depends on the on the severity of that expected effect, right? So people that have severe allergic reactions to the first dose, which is not many people at all, those people should not get a second dose. If people have the typical reactions, sore arm, fever, not feeling great for a few hours, they should definitely get the second dose. We know nationally that people are skipping that second dose sometimes, but we also know that second dose is important to give you the maximum amount of protection. So if you have any questions about whether you should get that second dose, talk to your doctor and they can help walk you through that. All right, doctor, thank you. And I want to ask about scheduling issues with those two dose vaccines. We touched on this a little bit during our break here on our WSOC app, but the CDC says about 8% of people who got their first dose didn't get their second dose. There are multiple reasons why some people are hesitant because they had a reaction to the first dose. We like just talked about and others had issues with uh, getting their second dose appointment. So Dr. Williams, I want to ask you this here. What if people can't get their second dose on time? And is Novant Health doing anything specifically to make sure people get both doses? Yeah, so first and foremost, we want to encourage all individuals who receive the first dose of the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccine to get the second dose. Typically, it's within three weeks after the first dose. Now, we understand uh, life gets in the way, things happen, and you might not make that three-week uh, period of time. But it's still okay to go get that uh, uh, second dose uh, shortly uh, thereafter. Uh, we have uh, outreach efforts so that if individuals receive the first dose and we do not see them for the second dose, we will reach out to those individuals to ensure they get set, uh, scheduled for their for their second dose. Uh, as it relates to our community efforts, uh, when we have our mobile units out delivering mm -hmm. first doses, uh, we ensure that we are at the same place, the same time, three weeks later, so that people who are familiar in the com community with those locations, uh, they come back to those locations. And it's important folks know that they're not fully vaccinated with that just one dose from Pfizer and Moderna, correct? Correct. So you need to have both doses. And then about two weeks after that uh, is when we typically see the, uh, the greatest uh, response in, in, in terms of immunity. All right, let's talk a little bit about what happens once you're fully vaccinated. There are some reports that some people who are fully vaccinated are still getting COVID. I believe it's called, I guess, a breakthrough cases here. Dr. Priest, what are the chances of that happening and why is that happening? Yeah, so the chances of that happening are way less than 1%. I could tell you in our organization, the percentage is 0.08%. Uh, no vaccine is perfect. In fact, these vaccines are about as perfect as I've seen in any kind of vaccine that we give uh, for anything. So they're really close, but there's no vaccine that's perfect. And everybody's a little bit different. So in very rare instances, people can get COVID, but generally when they do, the cases are really mild mm. and they don't require hospitalization and certainly have not, uh, people don't die from COVID after they've been vaccinated. So they're not, they're not hundred percent, but they're pretty darn close. Mm. Are the variants uh, creating those breakthrough cases? 
Yes, it's definitely possible. So one of the reasons we really need to get everybody vaccinated is the, the longer we let this drag out and the more virus we have in our communities, the more variants can, can come into the community that uh, the vaccines may help with, but maybe not quite as well. Um, and so some of those breakthrough cases could be from individuals getting variants that the vaccines uh, are not, not quite as effective for. All right, Dr. Priest, I want to ask you, North Carolina takes a step closer to normal later this afternoon with the outdoor mask mandate expiring. Earlier this week, the CDC eased guidelines for wearing masks outdoors if you're fully vaccinated. Why do they still need to wear masks indoors? Yeah, so it's a great question. We, we still have enough COVID around that um, there's still risk. We, we've actually seen a slight increase in our hospitalizations over the last few weeks. And so I, that, I think what happens in a pandemic, you learn a lot of things as the pandemic goes on. And what, you, what we've learned is the highest risk locations for getting COVID are still indoors when there are a lot of people in closed spaces and not a lot of good airflow. And so mm -hmm. I think what CDC recognizes is vaccines are working incredibly well. We still got a lot of people that need to be vaccinated, but for the most part, outside is not a place where, the, where you get the virus. So they're relaxing that. I think as we relax guidelines or you know, over the next few weeks, the last thing to go will probably be indoor masking. Um, and so that's just because that's the place where people typically get COVID. Dr. Priest, thank you. Well, we've covered a lot of topics so far, and we have much more to get to right after the break. And we'll ask our experts about Nobant's efforts to vaccinate our community. Please stay with us. All right, we have now a three minute break here. Uh, Dr. Priest, if I can talk to you about this, I was <coughs> curious to know uh, the Johnson and Johnson vaccine, the, the benefits of the Johnson and Johnson vaccine, it's one dose. Is that what makes it so appealing, especially I guess in rural areas? Yeah, it's an incredible important benefit, right? We talked about the people that haven't gotten back, come back to get their second dose of Pfizer or Moderna. That's not a problem with Johnson and Johnson. The other thing is the storage requirements are easier. So getting out to rural communities or areas where people are more transient or college campuses or those kind of places make a one dose vaccine really attractive. Uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Jerome Williams, I have to ask you here, how do we select uh, churches and the shopping centers that uh, that you go in that you offer these vaccines to? Is it based on zip codes that you feel are the hardest hit areas or how do you how do you find out which which areas you want to have these pop up clinics? So when we developed our uh, strategy for vaccinating the community, uh, we really had a two prong strategy. One big mass vaccination events where you can uh, have a high throughput of uh, a number of individuals and also very targeted outreach specifically to mm. areas that are historically un underserved. So when we look at zip codes based on our community health needs assessment, those areas that are uh, uh, having challenges uh, with health care, uh, we wanted to focus on those areas. And so churches in those areas, uh, schools in those areas and partners in those areas uh, that we worked with to deliver vaccines to those communities. Yeah, Dr. Priest, you know, people always say that uh, these vaccines, it, it takes years and years and years to develop this research. You mentioned they didn't cut corners, but you, there are also a number of people who have gone through the uh, trials. Can you talk a little bit about how many people went through these trials before it even made it to the general public? Yeah, thousands, right? So some of the early trials had at least 30,000 people in there. And, and those folks are medical heroes, right? So they needed to go help with the clinical trials so we could prove these things were safe so that the world could be vaccinated. Mm -hmm. um, we've given 250 million doses in the United States. So we, we've shown that, it's, that the vaccine is safe. But those early people who participate in trials are really heroes for helping us understand the vaccine and, and to ensure that it is safe. All right. Well, we'll have much more of that coming up in a minute as soon as we come back on Eyewitness News at noon. And literally 30 seconds. Doctors, thank you again for joining us. Welcome back to our vaccine town hall with Novant Health. Right now, 49% of adults in North Carolina have at least one dose of the vaccine. In South Carolina, about 42% of adults have at least one dose. And we're thankful to have doctors Priest, 
David Priest and Dr. Jerome Williams Jr. with Novant Health to join us to answer your questions about the vaccine. Now, in the time we have left, we want to ask you about Novant's vaccination efforts. Dr. Williams, I'm going to start with you. We talked earlier about the, this week and about Novant's new mobile health clinics here for people who may have missed that. Can you share a little bit about those mobile health clinics and just how vital they are to the community? Yeah, so we understand that uh, we have to have access uh, to the vaccines yeah. deep throughout our communities. And we've had um, uh, pop-up sites at churches, uh, pop-up sites at uh, uh, other community organizations. However, we wanna go deeper into the communities and that's where our mobile units uh, come into play. And so we have mobile units going uh, to uh, grocery stores. Uh, we have a partnership with uh, Lowe's Home Improvement where uh, we set up uh, our uh, mobile units in their parking lot. And we just don't set up the unit in the parking parking lot, our community engagement specialists actually go out into the community and offer information, education and awareness and point them in the direction of our, our of our units. That's very important. Just know one final question, Dr. Williams, do you need to be with a Novant patient to get the vaccine at a Novant site and do you have to have insurance? Uh, first and foremost, you do not need to be a Novant uh, patient. You can go to getvaccinated.org for all the mm. information about where we're locating our vaccination sites. Uh, that's number one. Uh, number two, you do not need to have insurance. Vaccines are free. I will also add, uh, when you go to getvaccinated.org, you can also choose the type of vaccine so that if you have concerns, uh, Pfizer, Moderna, or Johnson & Johnson is available. And initially... That was not available before. You had to take what was given, but now this, the, I guess the supply has reached a point where you have your choice. Which is a wonderful thing. Yes, it is. All right, with Dr. Priest, Dr. Williams, we want to thank both of you for taking time out of your busy day today and joining us this afternoon. This has been a great information that we hope all of you will consider, and we know there are so many other questions that we didn't have time to get to today. So we want to direct you to our WSOC TV news app. We have extensive information about the virus and the vaccine. Look for that under the news tab and on the home page. We have a vaccine tracker to help you find an appointment. And if you would like to be vaccinated through Novant Health, then you can head to their website, getvaccinated.org. Thank you so much for watching our special vaccine town hall here on Channel 9. And we'll have all the big stories of the day starting at 5 o'clock. Have a great Friday and a great weekend, everyone. Thank you for joining us.